Okay, I can't really tell if this is recording or not because it did a weird update. Um, so I'm just going to hope that it is and see what happens. So um, really quickly, this is a short presentation about the chain gang. Um, because they reference the chain gang in chapter 9 of Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, but you may be unfamiliar with what the chain gang is, and usually I have to explain it in class and it takes a while, so I'm making a short presentation of what the chain gang is. So first off, where did this start? It actually started with the 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution outlawed slavery, except as a punishment for a crime. So you are not allowed to have somebody work for you for free, um, involuntarily, unless it was because they had committed a crime and working for free was their punishment. So again, that means that okay to make people work for free if they're doing so as punishment for a crime they committed. So you steal a car, you work for free to pay off your debt to society, essentially. But what does this actually mean? This meant that white people in power, usually in the South but not always, began making laws that would make it easier to put black people in prison or jail so that they could then benefit from the free labor of black people again, like they had when slavery was allowed. So they're essentially trying to recreate slavery, even though slavery is technically illegal. And the laws that they put in place to try and sort of make black people go to jail were called the Black Codes. So this is an example of um, more Jim, Co Jim Crow than Black Code, but this it's a very much the same idea that things are separate and laws for black people are different than those for white people. So examples of the Black Codes, um, one was called Pig Laws, and this was where if you stole a farm animal worth a dollar, which I mean, back then, it's more than it was now, but still, a, it's not that much. Um, it would maybe be 75 to to $100. I don't know. That even seems too much now. That probably would be closer to, a dollar would be closer to, like, 20 or $25. So stealing a farm animal worth, like, 20 or $25 would could put you in jail for up to five years. So they could essentially have free labor for five years because a black person stole a chicken or a pig. And in fact, this is what happens in the book Sounder. The boy's father is accused of having stolen a pig, and so they take him to jail. It was also a crime to not have a job if you were a black man. They were called vagrancy laws. And you also had to be able to prove you had a job. So it wasn't just enough to be employed. You had to have, like, work papers or something like that. And also, black people were not allowed to own firearms. And the marriage between white people and people of color was forbidden. If you were found to be married to um, somebody of a different race than yourself you would go to jail. So what happened when you went to prison or jail? So what would happen would be that black prisoners would be leased to companies. To lease something means that you lend it out for a payment. So for example, if you lease your car to someone, they use your car and they pay you for its use. And it's usually for a longer period of time. Like, you would lease your car for a year. Um, you might lease um, some office space to somebody. Say you own a building, and you might lease a bunch of offices to a company for five years. So in this case, they are leasing humans. They are allowing the companies to use these humans for free work and the companies pay the prison or the jail. So again, they're essentially selling black people. That's what's happening. And this is slavery because they are working for free and it is not a voluntary thing. It is involuntary work for no pay, which is slavery. Um, the prisons get paid, the black people do not. So not only are the prisons, um, I guess, imprisoning black people, which to people like white supremacists would seem to be a good thing, but also the prisons are making money off of their prisoners. 
And most prisons do still make money off of their prisoners today. Prisoners do uh, work tasks today, and they are paid like 30 cents an hour. I am not, I'm very serious about this. They will have inmates in prisons do things like make license plates, and they will pay them, but they'll pay them like 30 cents an hour. And then the prisons will sell the license plates at regular prices. So the prisons are still today making profits off of their prisoners. But we cannot call it slavery because um, they are being paid. So we cannot call it slavery. So here's a picture of some men on the chain gang, and I would like you to notice the gentleman with the gun in the front, because usually the guards had firearms to threaten the prisoners with. So what is a chain gang? Um, prisoners are linked together using a chain, sometimes with a heavy ball in between prisoners, as much as 20 pounds. So try and imagine it, a newborn baby is about between usually like six to ten pounds. So 20 pounds is like a two-year-old. So imagine trying to drag a two-year-old around behind you as you're trying to work and the two-year-old is actually in between you and somebody else and you're both dragging the two-year-old around and you're connected to each other. Um, I could probably come up with a better metaphor than a human, but <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else that was about 20 pounds. Maybe like a couple gallons of water or something like that. Um, so prisoners are linked together using the chain. So you are linked to somebody on each side of you as well. While the length of chain is long enough to allow you to work, if you are a prisoner on a chain gang, you are still connected, so everybody's actions affect everybody else's. So if you trip, then it's very likely that you are going to cause people on either side of you to trip as well, because you are connected. The chain is usually secured to each person by something that we call a shackle. A shackle is essentially an iron bracelet that goes around the prisoner's ankle. Now this is terrible in a lot of ways as well, because not only um, is it very heavy, but also the metal usually rubs against your skin or against the fabric of your pants, which then rubs against your skin, which usually creates blisters or rashes or sometimes we call them ulcers. And a lot of times those could get infected and cause very, very serious problems for people. On a chain gang, prisoners did hard physical labor, such as breaking rocks, Literally, there are giant rocks and you have a pickaxe or something like that, a hammer, and you are just breaking the rocks. Digging ditches. Terrible. Clearing roads. Stuff like this. The guards would often beat or otherwise hurt the prisoners, threaten them, stuff like that. If they did things like try to run away or if they worked too slowly or if they tripped, stuff like that. And chain gangs no longer exist in the United States, except in Maricopa County. Maricopa County is Phoenix, um, but it is a volunteer chain gang. You volunteer for the chain gang in order to, like, get time off of your sentence or something like that. Um, having said that, there are a lot of people who are protesting the fact that there is a chain gang at all, even if it is voluntary, especially in Phoenix, because Phoenix is... Um, really bad for your health in a lot of ways if you're outside doing extremely physical labor, um, especially between the months of, like, March and November. It's very detrimental to your health. So here are some pictures of men on the chain gang, and later women were put on chain gangs as well. So... You can kind of see... In some of these pictures, like, you can see the chains between these gentlemen here. And, like, these guys are carrying shovels and stuff like that. Doing really, really hard physical labor. So that's what a chain gang is. And in the book, Mr. Avery is really concerned about... Um, going on the chain gang because if you couldn't pay your debts back then, that was another reason, too, that they would put you on the chain gang. You would work off your debts um, by doing free labor on a chain gang. But if you're on a chain gang, 
you are not able to take care of your family, really, because you're not physically with them. So Mr. Avery, having a bunch of children and a wife who depend on him, him going on to the chain gang would be almost a death sentence for their family. They wouldn't have nearly the same amount of money coming in, um, if at all any money coming in, and his children would probably be out on the streets. So um, he doesn't want to risk hurting his family like that just to stop shopping at the Wallace store. To him, it's not important enough to stop shopping at the Wallace store overseeing his family be kicked out into the streets, essentially. And that doesn't mean that he's not upset with the Wallaces or what the Wallaces have done. It's just that his needs are that he needs to keep his family fed and housed and clothed. So I hope this uh, was enlightening, if not a positive and happy PowerPoint. I hope at least that you learned something and that it was thought-provoking. So thank you for your time and attention.